Studio Series 49 Bumblebee, a figure I naively bought thinking I could use it as an alternative to MPM Bumblebee, but I was wrong. Around two centimeters wrong to be precise, which is like a lot. But a shame because I've surprisingly fallen in love with this latest version of Hasbro's most used and abused cash cow of a character. Because real quick, Homeboy hasn't caught a break ever since he reached stardom with the movies. Because year after year after year, Hasbro has been busy milking his soft, curvy, plump, rich, and yellow design. With so many repaints and retools and new figures in almost every size class that it's kind of wild to see Mirage now being pushed into that position. Anyways, like I said, I love this thing. I haven't really messed with any official Hasbro stuff since like Titan's Return which was back in like... Oh my god, I'm old. So the first thing that surprised me was this guy's size because he's adorably small. Not exactly Legends class, but neither a classic deluxe class. He's somewhere in between. Because here he is with Flame Toys, Leo Prime, Titans Return Top Spin and Twin Twist, Make Toys Tailgate, and my other MPMs. As you can clearly see, this guy doesn't scale. Because right now, as of writing this, I don't have an MPM Bumblebee. And I refuse to get his out of scale, overpriced, and inactive ass. Because this 5'9 Chad is godly. As a side of the obvious size difference, the engineering is nowhere near comparable to older deluxe figures. Because this guy is a mini masterpiece in every sense of the word, from his insanely accurate proportions and detail, which might even be more accurate to even the MPM, and his amazing paint job, which walks a beautiful line in being simplistic yet interesting enough to create some actual color breakup. But how can we forget about his damn near unlimited articulation, which goes a little like ball jointed head, ball jointed shoulders with a hinge in the body, ball jointed elbows, no wrist swivel, a weirdly tight waist swivel, ball jointed hips, swivel, 90 at the knees, and pivot with some toe action that can be faked. Cause yeah, this guy can pose and is built to be manhandled because of the ch this bendier, soft plastic in what would have otherwise been some fragile areas, making him an absolute joy to pose and play with. And the best part is you can find his ass on eBay for 20 bucks or less, which to me kind of excuses the minimal accessories and paint job. but doesn't excuse the fact that they couldn't give our broke asses a second normal head. You gotta buy it with a completely different figure, which low key, it is kinda genius from a business standpoint, but it's still a greedy move. Anyways, dropping to my knees to suck this figure off one last time, I gotta say, the transformation is nothing short of genius. It's fun, coherent, nothing gets in the way and you get a pretty accurate 2007 concept Camaro. Really well painted, might I add, as the black lines are painted with a precision and boldness that I'm genuinely impressed. Same with the tail lights and tires. It's all just really well done and adds so much flair. Anyways, for comparison, here he is with Classics Blur and yeah, the size still feels weird, but I can get behind it considering the design, the articulation, the sculpt, because after a while of not really messing with anything official, coming back to this little guy felt like an absolute joy, especially when buying so many high-end figures that don't really encourage you to mess around with them, more so just plop them out of the box and put them on the shelf and call it a day. So after messing with this guy for a good while, I can wholeheartedly say that this might be the best Bumblebee figure to date and one of my favorite figures, period. And keeping it a buck fitty, Bumblebee isn't even my favorite character, so I'm pretty shocked to make that statement myself. Also, yeah, I caved. See you soon. Meanwhile, subscribe, comment, and all that stuff. And also, thanks to everyone who watched the last video. It means a lot.